Christians, we have the tendency to forget what God says in the Word of God. We hear sometimes what He is for us, and we have the tendency to not remember what He says. Today I want to continue with a, with a story that is going to help me to illustrate something very, very interesting. One tribe of Native Americans had a unique practice for training their young braves. On the night of the boy's 13th, 13th birthday, he was placed in a dense forest to spend the entire night alone. Until then, he had never been away from the security of his family and tribe. But on this night, he was blindfolded and taken miles away. When he took off the blindfold, he was in the middle of thick woods by himself all night long. Every time a twig snapped, he probably visualized a wild animal ready to pounce. Every time an animal howled, he imagined a wolf leaping out of the darkness. Every time, listen, the wind blew, he wondered what more sinister, if I'm saying it right, sound it masked. No doubt, it was a terrifying night for many, for this young man. After what seemed like an eternity, spending all night in the middle of the forest. Can you imagine? I don't know if you ever have the chance to be in the middle of the forest, but some of us that we belong to big cities and we never go to the forest, once we go to the forest, we realize how dark can be the situations out there. How many know what I'm talking about? See, if you are from New York City, you're never in the dark. No matter what you say, oh, this is, this is dark. Nah, it's not. One of the unique things that we do in these places when we take the children and they're in camp and then they have to walk around. Uh, you know, this ministry does wonderful things for our children and, and camp. But they have to walk in the middle of the forest. And it's not even deep, deep. But it's dark enough that the kids start to like <gasps> understanding a different darkness. So imagine how dark would it be that place. After what seemed like an eternity, the first rays of sunlight enter the interior of the forest looking around the boy saw look at this flowers trees and the outline of the path then to his surprise please pay attention he beheld the fear or the figure of a man standing just a few feet away armed with a bow and arrow and to his surprise it was the boy's father he had been there all line, all night alone. Did you got the illustration? Can you think of any better way for a child to learn how God allow us to face the test of life? God is always present with us. Even when we don't, come on, you better give a hand clap to God. Even when we don't see him. Are you with me? I said you better give a hand clap to God. You're going to be here. Come on. You better praise God. Amen. <laughs> but the truth is, I don't know if, it doesn't, if that doesn't make you excited, nothing is going to make you excited. What are you saying? In life, we're going to be placed in situations so many times when we're not going to see nothing. But the truth is, not because we don't see him, it doesn't mean that he's there protecting us. He's there protecting us. While his presence is unseen, it is more real than in life itself are you getting what i'm saying i hope you do that's why as we live our lives we must remember that like in the tribe when the young ones are out in the test and even in the test becomes or even when the test becomes intimidating we must remember that our father is with us even if we cannot i repeat again even if we cannot see him protecting us he's standing over there with a with, with a bow and an arrow Ready to protect his son. And what a great, great story to remind us how God is. Today, I want to talk about the importance. Listen, listen. It's going to help you. 
about the importance of protecting what God is doing in you. I want to talk to you about the importance of understanding that you must protect what God is doing in you. You see, what we do for God, it becomes a sacrifice. I'm going to say it again. What we do for God, it becomes a sacrifice. In the old times, if you remember, people needed to come with sacrifices. Are you with me? To honor God. To worship Him. You need to know that the greatest sacrifice, it has been done. It has been done by Jesus Christ. But what you do and what I do in life, is a sacrifice. What you do, what I do, it becomes a sacrifice. That's why I have called this teaching, protect your sacrifice. So many times, God is doing something special in us. And we must understand that the enemy, as we know him, listen, we, uh, as we know him, He's now, we, he's well known as the deceiver. He's the one that comes to kill, to rob. Remember? He comes to deceive us so he can rob us. Or he can rob, rob us the blessing from God. Did you ever felt, let me start with this because this can help you. Did you ever felt that you are working so hard for something? Please pay attention. To have good results. And at the end, the enemy has robbed you. I'm going to say it again. Have you ever felt that you're working so hard for something to have good results? And at the end, the enemy has robbed you. Anybody? Okay, again, I guess the teaching is from me and the person in the back. Anybody? Anybody has felt at a point in your life, you know, I'm working so hard for something, I'm trying so hard, and just right before you receive the blessing, you've been robbed by the enemy. Anybody? And some of you are not raising your hand because maybe you don't even understand how badly you're being robbed. In life, what we do, listen, becomes like a good sacrifice to God. But here's where we have to be careful that we do, that what we do, I'm sorry, it doesn't get robbed. You see, this is what it happens. Please pay attention. We obey, we work really hard to be where we are, and then the enemy sends what I have called birds of prey to rob or sacrifice. There's a story that is going to help us, was going to help me to illustrate this. In Genesis 15, you can go in your Bibles right now, that's where you have your Bibles, or if not, you can follow us on the screens. In Genesis 15, Verse 1 says, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham, actually Abraham, in vision. It says that it came, listen, the word of God to Abraham. It says, do not be afraid. What was the first thing that God was saying to Abraham? Do not be what? Do not be what? Listen, God knows, please pay attention, that in life, we would experience this emotion. So God says, hey, here's the first thing that I want that you know. Don't be afraid. God says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I am your shield, your very great reward. I don't know about you, but when God starts to tell me that, I'm going to say, God, you know I love you. You know, you're telling me that do not be afraid, that you are my protection, that you are my reward. That's it. What else I need? What else I need? But and then Abraham says, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me? And you know the story. It's about his son. Since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my state is Eliezer, uh, and he's not even my son, blah, blah. But the word of the Lord came back, verse 4. These men will not be your heir. And God started to say, look at the stars. You know the story. Abraham believed the Lord, verse 6. And he credited to him as righteousness and then look at what it says please please and, and uh, god started to say this is what i'm going to do i'm going to move you from one place to another i'm going to bless you. you're going to be a blessing blah 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 but and then verse 8 it says but abraham says sovereign lord how can i know that i will gain possession of it have you ever felt how can i know that god is really doing something in me 
I know I'm walking in obedience, but how can I know that I'm already in the point of taking possession of something? Look at what God says. So the Lord said to him, bring me, I don't know how to say this word, a heifer. Do you say it like that? Heifer. That. All right. A goat and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abram bought all this. Listen to him. Here's the teaching. Here's the teaching. Are you paying attention? Should nobody talking to nobody? Abram bought, brought all this to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. He did his part. And then look what happens right away. Then, right away the story says, he, he obeys God, he brings the sacrifice, he brings the best of the best, he plays the sacrifice, stay with me, stay with me. And then it says, then he's doing what is right. I'm walking in obedience. I'm trusting in the word of God. God is saying I'm doing as well, whatever he's asking from me. I'm, I'm placing the sacrifice. And just right before, please pay attention. God make it acceptable. Look at what it says. He did not cut it in half. Then, birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abraham drove them away. In other words, birds came to steal, to rob the sacrifice. The birds came to eat what it was placed as a sacrifice. They wanted to rob. Remember, they didn't hunt this. These birds of prey wanted to rob his sacrifice. And then it says, but Abram drove them away. I don't know if you ever picture this in your mind, but I need you to understand how they used to be the sacrifices. I want that you picture, you know, a pile of rocks in this place, like a table. And then right on the top, they place the animals. Are you with me? But there is still no fire in it. He's only getting ready. Are you with me? There is no fire yet. But as he's placing the food, the, you know, the animals, the sacrifice. Stay with me because it's a great teaching right here. He's placing the animals. It says, the animals. Have you ever been in a place? I visit this place with my family. It's in City Island. We like to go and eat. Have you guys ever go to City Island and to, did you go to eat? And, and, and have you ever noticed that as you go out to eat your food, there is this nice birds that start to say, mine, 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 mine. Have you ever seen these birds? Mine, 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 mine. How do you call these birds? Seagulls, right? They go like, mine, 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 mine. And they start, to, how many know what I'm talking about? And you cannot throw a piece of bread because soon they're going to pick you up in the air, right? Mine, mine, mine. One time we made a mistake. Listen, we were in a place and my son, he doesn't even remember this, but he threw bread. He started throwing bread. So the, and, you know, the birds, they start to come. But they were not only getting the bread, they were getting my food and everything else. So I have to start moving and say, Shoo, shoo, shoo. And it doesn't matter how many times I was doing shoo, shoo. They were like, shoo, shoo, shoo. Right? They were looking for the food and I was moving and moving. I need you to understand. He obeyed. He placed the sacrifice. But the enemy was trying to rob the sacrifice. What he did? He said, well, I did my part. I obey. I put the sacrifice. If the verse come to rob it, hey, that's up to you, God. He was, listen, conscious that he needed to protect what he was doing for God. If there is a teaching I want to tell you here right now. You have to protect what you're trying to do for God. You better understand the understanding of what I'm trying to tell you today. You have to protect what you're trying to do. Because what you're trying to do, the enemy is trying to rob that. I don't know about you, but I found myself there so many times. I have worked so many years. I mean, know what I'm talking about. 
I worked so many years, and this week can happen in a very funny way. And I'm not even going to go in details. But I have been in this place for 20 years. I have been faithful doing so many things. I have been this. And in a minute, the enemy can come and rob you something. And I'm like, what? Say what? Say what? Uh-uh. No. 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 I'm not going to let you rob what I've been placing in this place. Some of us, we're allowing the enemy to rob our testimony. How long it has taken you? Oh, somebody's receiving now. How long it has taken you to build your testimony, to be where you are right now, and then let the enemy rob you? You only have one testimony. Don't let the enemy rob your testimony. Because he will come and rob you. One dumb post in Facebook will rob your testimony. I heard from our founder many times say, it takes a lot of things to prove we're smart, and only one that we've really done. That's what I'm talking about today. You have to protect. I want to encourage you to take serious what you're doing for God, because nobody else is going to protect what you got going on. I'm going to have to stand for myself and protect what I have got going on, because the enemy is going to send birds of prey. To, come on, you better give a hand clap to God, my friends. But the Bible says that he started... You know, to, 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 to draw away the birds. And you know what? I've, oh, watch it, watch it. That's where the story ends? No. You want to know the story? Yes. You want me that I continue? Yes. Okay, with this exam, no, I ain't continue. I got breakfast waiting for me right now. No, you want me that I continue? Yes. See, if you know the story, you're already getting it. It says, in other words, that he got tired. Look at what it says. But Abraham drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abraham fell into a deep sleep. In other words, I'm tired of fighting against the lies of the enemy. You cannot get tired. You hear me? I'm tired of the lies of the enemy. The birds of prey. You want to know what they are? They're thoughts from the enemy. They come against you. They come in many forms. But they definitely come in thoughts. To say, oh, you're really sick. Oh, you are nobody. Oh, you're not going to make it. Oh, God is not really moving in you. Oh, listen, you're going to die. You know what? The birds of prey. They're trying to rob what God is doing in you. You know what God is doing in you? God is saying, trust in me. I am the healer. I can do what no other man can do. But you know what? The enemy, oh, come on. You better give a hand up to God. The enemy wants to steal it. And you cannot let it. But you're going to get tired. Say, I'm going to get tired. I'm human. It says as the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep. And a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. But I love the story. In verse 13, there's a lot of stuff. Then the Lord said, No, sir, no, you said this was a whole prophecy. Verse 16, in the fourth generation, blah, blah, blah. I was talking about Israel. I'm not going to go through that. Verse 17, when the sun, here we go. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared. Why do you think it says, hallelujah, and a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces? When you get tired, here's my teaching to you, and you feel that you cannot move on no more. If you have done your part, God knows how many know what I'm talking about? That God knows. God knows that you left every strand in you. How many know what I'm talking about? He knows that when you're really fighting or when you are passive, not fighting. But he knows that when you're giving your very best. And I have found myself many times serving my God. That so many times uh, he knows. And I cannot move in my own strength no more. And you know what I have found? You want to know? That when I cannot do it no more, he sends. He sends, he sends help from heaven. And you know what? Abraham received help from heaven. And it says that he sent, oh, you better give a hand up to God. It says that a fire pot with a blazing torch appeared. And, and did you know the story? It was moving and driving what? Away. Moving away. The attacks against the sacrifice. And finally, it was consumed. Say, it was consumed. And that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. A smoking oven and a flaming torch, my friends, 
passing between the pieces of the animals is representing the presence of God. The Lord himself passed between these pieces of animals. Animals. Why I keep saying that? Animals. God himself will send help from heaven. When he sees you protecting your sacrifice, if you don't care, nobody will. How long has take you obeying God, honoring God? I don't know what I'm talking about. And then in one instant, the enemy come with thoughts, and you're going to let it. I thank God for my wife. Can I be honest here right now? I know I make a lot of things funny always about my wife. Because she's the only one that can take it and love me again. <laughs> but I'm going to say something about my wife. I receive very often pray. I mean, birds will pray. It's just, it is what it is. Very often I receive birds will pray attacking me. These are thoughts from the enemy that are trying to rob what God is doing in me. And one of the things that the enemy has tried years in the past, the enemy has tried, and I'm going to be very honest here. The enemy has tried to rob me many times. I remember years and years ago, people were saying to me, and when are you going to leave like everybody else leaves? Did they have told you that stuff? Because they, 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 the, the members are coming to say this, right? When are you going to leave too? Well, it's birds to pray. Well, you're going to end up leaving like everybody else lives. And I look at them, and I say, Shoo! Get out of here! I'm not going to let you rob in what God is doing to me. And I say, no, God called me to this place. No man but God called me to this place. And I'm going to stay faithful, giving my sacrifice, even if it's very difficult. I'm not going to let nobody. All right, all right? But you know what? Years pass. And I get tired of fighting many times. I get tired. And I thank God now, as I'm saying for my wife. This is very, very, listen. This is like I'm cooking a bread and it's coming out of my spirit. Nobody has heard this. I got tired many times. And the birds of prey came back again in a different way. And the enemy said, you know what? Nobody's appreciating what you're doing in this place. You could be something else, somewhere else like this. You're paying a huge sacrifice in this place. After all this time, look at it still what's got going on. And I was almost like saying to the bears, come, stand up in my arms. You know how I was almost like welcome them. You know what I'm talking about? I almost start to act like them like, ah, 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 ah. Like, you're right, you're right. Ah, ah, ah. And I make it funny, but I hope you understand the seriousness of the situation. The enemy start to say, it's not worth it. When shootouts start to happen in front of my house, and I have to grab my kids and put them inside the house. You know, I can reach people anywhere in the world. But I thank God for my wife. Because I went home and she noticed the birds. She noticed the birds. And she said, honey. See, God sent help from heaven. And she said, we have not given our life in this place almost 20 years. For now, let the enemy take the very sacrifice and rob the sacrifice. And I, come on, you better give a hand clap to God. We're not going to let the enemy. And I was like, you're right, honey. And I say, go, go, ah. And I start to send the thing away. And the moment I sent away, you want to know something? I saw God himself with his word and saying, I am with you. I brought you here to help these people. I got great plans about what. Come on, you better give glory to God. So you see, when we do our part, God is going to do his part. Amen? He is more interested in protecting, listen, your sacrifice than even you. And it's something you need to understand. Now remember, the story is very simple. God told him, don't be afraid. God said, I will make you great. I will give you a great promise to Abraham. Abraham. So Abraham believes. 
place the sacrifice. But it says that the birds of prey came to rob the sacrifice. And I repeated myself again for those of you who were not paying attention. This is exactly what the enemy does. He sends his birds of prey to rob us. Look, please get this. You need to get this. Once we become Christians, how many know from not being Christian to become a Christian is not an easy thing? It's a daily sacrifice. It's what the Word of God says. Present your bodies as a daily what? Sacrifice. It's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing to choose what is right when everything around you says, choose the wrong. Well, you pass that part. Then you choose to obey. How many believe that obey is not an easy thing? Okay, haha, <laughs> somebody like not getting it. How many believe that obey is not easy? Raise your hand, honest people. How many know what I'm talking about? It's not easy. But then you choose to obey. We give our lives in a constant act of obedience. Then we are about to receive our blessing like Abraham. And the enemy wants to steal or sacrifice and he sends the birds to pray spiritual speaking the enemy wants to steal or sacrifice you may ask me what is what he wants to rob us these birds wants to overrule what God has ordained for you you hear me he wants to overrule what God has already planned for you the birds come for this sacrifice or the birds that came I'm sorry for this sacrifice were Vultures, and I'm saying it right. You call them vultures? Vultures? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And their aim, spiritually speaking today, to take you by surprise and see that you are not where you ought to be. Let me explain a little bit about these guys, or these animals. They are a large, a large bird of prey. They do, they do not kill other animals. Rather, eat their own the, the ones already killed or dead. They feed on dead flesh. They're ugly. I don't know what I'm talking about. They're ugly. Pretty much, if I can describe them in one word, will be this. They're very intimidating. They're very what? Intimidating. And that's what the enemy wants to do. These birds of prey come with a huge intimidation in your mind. The enemy has come constantly to intimidate you. You must choose, my friend, to drop away, to chase away these birds. How you do it? Look at me. You're living your life. Look at me. You're living your life. Then suddenly you have a thought. You're in the house of God, worshiping Him. I'm going to give you a simple test. Have you ever been in the house of God, worshiping Him, with a good attitude to receive the Word of God? And even in the house of God, you receive a thought completely different and an attack of the enemy, even as you're standing in the house of God. Yes or no? Listen. You need to learn this. Not every thought that you have comes from God. Get it? Not every thought. So you're going to have to do as everything you're thinking. What are you saying? Look at me. You got to learn to choose your own thinking. You have to learn to choose. I choose to not get mad today. I choose to be better today. I choose to... I don't know what I'm talking about. I choose. I'm not going to let those thoughts... But no. No. They're not going to rob... Everything I have done. It used to happen that we used to work on Saturday so hard. I used to be the bus ministry director and transportation director and the crowd control director and the garbage director. And the, trust me, many years before you even were born, my friends, I was here helping this place when this place was going through a huge transition. So it was like 20 jobs at the same time. Okay. I used to start at 4 a.m. in the morning, pulling out buses, and finish at 12 at night, bringing the buses sometimes, the broke down buses, and getting ready for Sunday, and wake up already to 5 o'clock in the morning to get the buses again. 
But it needed to be done, and it was whatever it takes. Can I tell you something? Sometimes I was so tired doing what it was right, working my physical, my mind, my spirit, my everything. And right before I was about to go to bed and to say, God has been good, the birds of prey came. How many know what I'm talking about? They always appear. When it was about to receive my blessing, I finished. It's been done. I did it with everything in me. And I'm about to receive now the blessing from God. And the enemy always used to come. But I learned something. I learned to discover the birds of prey. And when they came, I just took the word of God. And I say this. Greater is the one that is in me than the one that is against me. He, the one that called me, is going to complete the work. I can do all things through Jesus Christ. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm not just going, shoo, shoo. What am I doing? I'm speaking the word against the thoughts that are coming against me. And I'm telling you, I have become successful every day of my life. Oh, you better give glory to God, my friends. Amen? Amen? Don't be afraid. Well, the bird's going to show up. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. As you place your life in a sacrifice, don't let the enemy rob it. And don't be afraid. He said, remember to Abraham, don't be afraid. I'm going to be your shield. I'm going to be like the hunter. You're not going to see me, but I will be there. How many of you believe if a wolf would have tried to attack the 13-year-old, you think the father would move fast and kill that wolf? I don't know what I'm talking about. Any mom, any dad in this place? If somebody want to come against your kid, I'm, I'm asking you. Oh, have you, you have never seen Gladys, my friends, mad when somebody wants to do something against his kids. Oh, the lion of lions, my friends. We even call it the dragon. All right? She was like, <laughs> try to mess with him. Are you with me? How many moms are like that? Huh? Huh? How many dads are like that? Here's the greatest thing. As you protect your sacrifice of a long life, don't let the enemy rob your sacrifice. I see many, many people giving their everything, giving their life, and in the last, the last mile, they quit. Or they let the enemy rob their sacrifice. Don't let the enemy rob what has cost you and has cost him. He's, listen, keep doing your part and he's going to show up. And he's going to help you even if you don't see him to protect what you have been placed in the sacrifice. If you believe that, give it a hand clap to God. Amen. Stand up in your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is great. Amen. God is with us. And we have to protect what it becomes used by him let us pray father in the name